Good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. A woman aged 37 years old presented to you complaining of heavy menstrual bleeding and she is of African descent. And after complete history taking and examination and investigation, you discover that she has multiple uterine fibroid. And this is the title of our lecture today. So, what we wanted to know about uterine fibroid or leomyoma? The definition, the incidence of fibroid and the prevalence, risk factors and the etiological hypothesis, the sites of fibroid, the pathology, the pathologic changes of fibroids, the clinical features, the diagnosis and the management, and what about fibroid effect during pregnancy. Fibroids are benign tumors that originate from the uterine smooth muscle tissue, whose growth depends mainly on estrogen and progesterone hormones. Leomyomas are the most common benign tumor in women of reproductive age. Also, it is a common benign tumor in child bearing age specifically, and it is rare before birth and decrease in size after menopause because it is hormone dependent. Symptomatic uterine fibroids may affect up to 25% of all women. Their prevalence is age dependent. They can be detected in up to 80% of women by 50 years of age and it is more prevalent in black African women 20 to 50 percent of women are symptomatic and 39 percent of all hysterectomies performed annually in the United States is due to fibroid so it is very common lesion it is benign, but it is very common lesion. What are the risk factors? African descent, age greater than 40 years, early menarche and late menopause, family history, family history of uterine fibroid, obesity, and nullivarity. And as you see, it is one of the hyperesterogenic disease. The etiologic hypothesis include estrogen and progesterone hypothesis. Estrogen and progesterone play prominent role in promoting growth. That's why this lesion is commonly found in reproductive years. The other theory about growth factors and the disordered wound healing, the expression of various Gross factors like vascular and mucilial gross factor A and the insulin like gross factor 1 is higher in uterine leomyoma than normal myometrium. The transforming gross factor beta pathway always play a role in disordered wound healing, which may lead to tumor genesis. What about the genetic factors? Genetic factors explain that this tumor occur more in certain families and in certain races. And as we said before, it is commoner in black races. So this suggesting that it has a genetic factor. What are the sites of fibroid? As you see in the picture, fibroid may be corporeal in the body of the uterus or fundus or cervical if 
that it occurs in the cervix, or ligamentary in the broad ligament, or parasitic, as we will see later on. What about the corporeal? Corporeal can be divided into three categories. Submucosal fibroid, intramural fibroid, and subserosal fibroid. And the corporeal, of course, constitute the majority, about 97%, point five of all cases of fibroid. A wild cervical fibroid constitutes only 2%, and usually it is solitary lesion, as you see in this picture. And it may reach a huge size, and the uterus looks as if it is sitting on top of this huge mass. And it is said in the literature that it looks like monkey on a mountain. And this mountain is a huge cervical mass. Myoma can be anterior or posterior or central in the supravaginal part of the cervix. While in the portion vaginalis, there may be fibroid polyp, as in this picture. This is fibroid polyp arising from the portion vaginalis. What are the other types of fibroids which constitute less than 0.5%? Interligamentary, when the tumor grow laterally in the broad ligament. Parasitic fibroid, when subserous pedunculated fibroid gains a new plus supply from the nearby organ, like momentum, for example, or a structure, then detach it completely from the uterus because it has its own supply from the momentum or the nearby organ. Or intravenous leomyomatosis, benign metastasizing leomyoma, intravenous metastasis into distant organ like lung, it's rare condition of course, Leomyomatosis disseminata peritonealis. They are metaplastic small grosses over the peritoneal surfaces rather than being metastatic. Fecal classification 2011 divided it into eight categories, starting from zero and reaching up to eight. Look to the picture. Zero is intracavitary lesion with the pedicle. L1, the tumor is intracavitary more than 50%. L2, the submucosal fibroid, but the bulging inside the cavity is less than 50%. L3, completely intramural fibroid, just touching the endometrial plate. L4, completely intramural fibroid, not touching the endometrial plate. L5, intramural fibroid bulging to be sub -serous. but this bulge is less than 50%. L6, sub leomyoma, was bulging from the surface more than 50%. L7, subserous leomyoma with a pedicle. L8 is cervical fibroid or any other parasitic fibroid. The macroscopic appearance of fibroid, the size is variable. Maybe large tumor or very small tumor. Shape is, is usually spherical, and they usually it is a multiple lesion, and the consistency is firm. And the F degeneration occurred, it may become more soft, and the F calcification is occurred, it may be hard in consistency. The cut section reveals definite pseudo capsule, as you see in the picture from the surrounding compressed mimetrium. The distinction between the myoma and the surrounding mimetrium is usually clear. 
Lock to this whirly pattern. Intermingling, intermingling muscle fibers and fibrous tissue. And it is paler than the surrounding. The microscopic appearance include smooth muscle cells and the fibrous tissue cells arranged in bundles, as you see in the picture here. The blood supply is provided from the periphery. The center of the tumor is poorly blood supply, therefore liable to degenerative changes. What are the pathological changes of fibroid or complication that may happen? Hyaline degeneration, as in this picture, is the commonest one. Cystic degeneration, and the tumor become more cystic and soft. Fatty degeneration, fat is deposited between the muscle cells. Calcification, which is occurring with uncolated subserous tumor or after menopause. Red degeneration, which occurred during pregnancy in the barbarian due to venous obstruction. Sarcomas changes, which is very rare, constitutes less than 0.1%. Atrophy, torsion, incarceration or impaction in the pelvis, hemorrhage, infection, and vascular changes are other complications that may occur in fibroid. And in this picture, this is one of my cases with red degeneration occurred during pregnancy. The symptoms are affected by size, number, and the location of the tumor. And the most common symptom is abnormally trying bleeding in the form of heavy menstrual bleeding. And the other symptoms include pelvic pressure, bowel dysfunction, urinary frequency, urgency, or urinary retention, also low back pain, dyspareunia, constipation. Any effect on infertility? Yes, it may affect the fertility causing inability to conceive or recurrent abortion or miscarriage. Also, it may cause postpartum hemorrhage due to affection of the uterine contraction. Also, there may be symptoms of complications, like red degeneration of fibroid may present it as acute abdominal pain. Also, torsion in subserous fibroid is medical, may cause acute pain in the abdomen. Also, degenerative changes is associated with pain. The diagnosis include history, abdominal examination, pelvic examination, and investigations. History of abnormal menstrual bleeding, especially heavy menstrual bleeding, and sometimes there is intermenstrual bleeding in certain conditions due to associated pathology like endometrial hyperplasia or due to submucous fibroid polyp ulcerated and infected. But the commonest presentation of bleeding is heavy menstrual bleeding pelvic pain, abdominal discomfort, abdominal enlargement, abdominal distension, dyspepsia, pressure symptoms, urinary retention, or frequency. Abdominal examination reveal pelvic abdominal swelling, surface may be smooth in submucous fibroid or irregular nubi in intramural or subserous fibroid, Firm, not tender, and the dull on percussion, and the mobile only from side to side, not above, not above and down, because it is pelvic abdominal swelling. Pelvic examination: the swelling is continuous with the uterus, and the moved with the movement of the cervix. Uterus is enlarged and deformed, may be symmetrical or asymmetrical. Of course, in submucous fibroid. It is symmetrically enlarged uterus, while in intramural or subserous fibroid is asymmetrical. Broad ligament fibroid is felt on one side, displacing the uterus to the other side. 
Investigation include ultrasound is the most important one. Is cheap, available, and it can be used easily and non-invasive and can diagnose accurately the leomyoma and detect the location, the size, and the number of fibroids. If we inject saline inside the uterine cavity through Foley's caster in the cervix and do ultrasound, this is called the saline sonohistrography, as in this picture. And this is very important to detect the submucous fibroid because of the contrast of the saline fluid. I can see the submucous fibroid here in this picture very well. In this picture, this is only ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound. This is a subserous leomyoma. MRI is accurate in diagnosis of leomyoma and I can need it only when I am in doubt for diagnosis but it is expensive and they need expertise personnel as you see in this picture this is the leomyoma here 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 laparoscopy can be done especially in cases with infertility to evaluate the pelvis and they can see the sub serous fibroid and the intramural fibroid and the enlarged uterus. Again, in investigation, history salpingogram in infertile women and those with history of recurrent abortion, we can see full in the defect. Like this picture, as you see in this picture, this is fundal myoma bulging inside the cavity, causing filling defect. This is a filling defect, this is a bingogram, the dye injected here inside the uterus. Hysteroscopy, as in this picture, I'm inside the cavity of the uterus now, and there is mass bulging inside the cavity. This is submucosal fibroid. Endometrial sampling is indicated in cases of intramenstrual bleeding. There, we exclude the presence of coexisting endometrial pathology. Because there may be another pathology like in the mitral hyperfusion. Also, you should complete the lab investigation like CBC or analysis at the urine culture. What is the differential diagnosis of uterine masses? Of course, uterine fibroid, which is a very common benign lesion. Pregnancy, of course, very important to exclude pregnancy. Adenomyosis, as in this picture, there is no definite mass, but there is any cyst inside the muscle wall and the hyperplasia and the fibrosis in the muscle wall and the thickening of the muscle wall of the uterus, but no well, well circumscribed lesion like leomyoma. Ectopic pregnancy, endometrial polyp, endometriosis, endometrial carcinoma. Uterine carcinosarcoma, uterine sarcoma, and the metastatic diseases. All these are differential diagnoses of uterine masses. The treatment of uterine fibroid should be tailored to the size and the location of the tumor. Also, when they want the patient age, symptoms, desire to maintain fertility, the desire to keep the uterus, the physician's experience, and the available, the, the available equipments and operative theater with all needed tools. Please log to this table here we'll see the patient characteristics and the best treatment options. If asymptomatic woman, it's better to do clinical surveillance. So you will do follow up for asymptomatic patient. Just do follow up, clinical follow up for the patient for any increase in size, any appearance of symptoms or any complications. Just follow up. 
infertile women with distorted uterine cavity as a submucosal fibroid who desire future fertility do myomectomy, especially the hysteroscopic myomectomy, which is much better than abdominal myomectomy. But in certain circumstances, hysteroscopy is a best choice. If the, my, the submucosal myoma is less than 4 cm, if it is single, so it can be resected easily by electrode through hysteroscopy. In cases of symptomatic women who desire future fertility, medical treatment or myomectomy. And we said before, we have either hysteroscopic myomectomy or abdominal laparotomy and myomectomy. Symptomatic women who don't desire future fertility but wish to do to preserve the uterus. I can give her medical treatment or do myomectomy or do uterine artery embolization or magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound surgery. In case of symptomatic women who want to do definitive treatment and don't desire future fertility and she's completed her family and mostly she is above 40 also distract me by least invasive approach possible like vaginal hysterectomy or laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy or abdominal hysterectomy via laparotomy. The expectant management, there is minimal concern for malignancy in women with asymptomatic fibroid. That's why watchful waiting is preferred for men. Just ask the patient to come for follow-up and do clinical evaluation every three to six months. Medical treatment include combined oral contraceptives, GnRH agonists like Guzerlin, Zoladex, 3.6 milligram every month for three months, subcutaneous injection in the abdomen, levonorgestrel sterilizing interuterine system, it's called the Mirena, also proved to be beneficial in case of treatment of uterine fibroid so long as the uterus is not very large and the cavity is not distorted so I can insert the marina. It reduces the amount of heavy menstrual bleeding. Aromatase inhibitor like letrozole, what's called Fumara, Androgenic steroids like gestirinone or andranazole, but the side effects of hirsutism and increased body weight and salt and water retention is disadvantaged. Selective progesterone receptor modulators like mifepristone can be used and it decreases the amount of bleeding during menstruation. There is lack of high quality evidence regarding oral and injectable progestin for uterine fibroids. However, progestin may be used also due to associated pathology like simple endometrial hyperplasia. Antifibrinolysis like tranexamic acid, yes, can decrease the amount of blood loss during menstruation and also non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs prove to be beneficial and also for control of pain. The surgical treatment include either myomectomy or hysterectomy, myomectomy through hysteroscopic myomectomy and is optimal for submucosal fibroid less than 4 cm when more than 50% of the tumor is intracavitary. As you see in the picture here, this is a stereoscopic myomectomy. Laparoscopic myomectomy for subserosal fibroid or interstitial myoma, as you see here in the picture. 
abdominal myomectomy as you see in the right side here picture open the abdomen lower transverse incision or midline incision and do inoculation of the myoma then repair the uterus lastly vaginal myomectomy as in this picture for pedunculated submucous myoma through the vagina this is large pedunculated myoma the second line is the hysterectomy i have vaginal hysterectomy as in this picture abdominal hysterectomy as in this picture and the laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy as in this picture of course you should use the least invasive approach and there is evidence and the guidelines grade b evidence that the list the least invasive one should be chosen according to the circumstances available. Another line of treatment is uterine artery embolization. Please look to this picture. The idea is you enter the femoral artery through a caster, then reach the uterine artery and inject a material that cause closure of this vessel. This will make the fibroid to shrink, decrease in size because of decreased blood supply to the uterus and to the fibroid. The most common complication is post embolization syndrome, which is characterized by mild fever and the pain and the vaginal expulsion of fibroid. There is insufficient evidence on the effect of uterine artery embolization on future fertility and still need many studies. Uterine artery embolization is an option for women who wish to preserve the uterus or avoid surgery because of medical comorbidities or personal preference. And it is an interventional radiologic procedure A second line of treatment, myolysis. It is a minimally invasive procedure targeting the destruction of the, of the fibroid by a focused energy delivery system, such as laser, heat, or magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound surgery, as in this picture. This is a focused ultrasound beam. This is the machine, this is the MRI. Spontaneous conception has occurred in patients receive this treatment, but further studies are needed to examine its effect on future fertility. What is the effect of fibroid? Sorry. What's the effect? of fibroid on pregnancy and what is the effect of pregnancy on fibroid effect of pregnancy of fibroid because of large amount of hormone there is enlargement of fibroid also red degeneration may happen because it is very specific to pregnancy also because of the growing uterus torsion of the dunculated subserosal fibroid may happen what is the effect of fibroid in pregnancy? A portion or miscarriage, return labor, abnormal lie at the presentation, stulpers, placental abruption, anemia, uterine, uterine inertia, and the postpartum hemorrhage, retain the placenta and the placenta accreta. What about the management of fibroid during pregnancy? Actually, during pregnancy, you should do conservative treatment. Just follow up to the patient, good antenatal care, and if any complication like root degeneration develop, you should advise the patient for rest, taking the fluids, intravenous fluid, give her 
analgesic safe with pregnancy and the antibiotic suitable also with pregnancy. And the, com the condition usually improve within few days. What about during labor? Vaginal delivery, if there is no mechanical obstruction, according to the site of the leomyoma. So long as there is no obstetric indication, we will do vaginal delivery if fibroid is not causing mechanical obstruction. So during section may be needed, and the try to during incision for cesarean section to avoid the site of fibroid. Or you may do cesarean and hysterectomy because the uterus has a multiple fibroid and the patient completed her family and she is above 40 and she is consenting for hysterectomy. You can, after cesarean, complete the operation with hysterectomy. Or you may do hysterectomy following delivery of the baby because of severe postpartum hemorrhage as an emergency case. Lastly, after delivery, be sure that the uterus is completely contracted, strongly contracted, and the amount of blood loss is average or within the average level. And if there is atony, you should give equipolex like oxytocin infusion and the prostaglandin F2-alpha to control postpartum hemorrhage. And follow the lines of for treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. So, this is the end of my lecture. We talked today about the leomyoma, which is a very common benign tumor in the uterus and the cervix. And we said it reached up to 80% as a prevalence for ladies reach at the age of 50 years old and 25 percent of symptomatic patient with uterine fibroid happen in a child bearing age the risk factors we said lactases and african descent and we said early menarche and late menopause, obesity and the non -liberty. And we said these uh, sites of fibroid may be purpureal or cervical or other types like broad ligament fibroid or other parasitic fibroid. And we talked about the pathology and the pathological changes and we said that hyaline degeneration is the commonest one. And we said red degeneration occurs specifically during pregnancy. Other types of degeneration may happen. Sarcoma, leomyosarcoma is rare, constitute less than 0.1%. And other complications like torsion, hemorrhage, infection, the vascular changes may occur. The clinical feature include heavy menstrual bleeding, pelvic pain, abdominal pain, bowel symptoms, and urinary symptoms, and the backache, dyspareunia. Sometimes it may cause infertility or recurrent miscarriage. Diagnosis and the management depend on the history of we have menstrual bleeding and other symptoms, and examination abdominal and the local examination probe pelvic abdominal mass, firm and consistency, mobility of the mass transmitted to the cervix, and investigation include ultrasound or sonohistography or MRI or hysteroscopy or laparoscopy all these are methods for investigations hysterosalvingogram can detect 
the intracavitreal lesion in cases of infertility. And sometimes we need endometrial sample if there is regular bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding to exclude other pathology like endometrial hyperplasia. And lab investigation for anemia, CBC, and the bleeding and the clotting time. And we reached the management and we said we have different lines of treatment like medical treatment, surgical treatment, myolysis, uterine artery embolization therapy, and it could be the myomectomy done either hysteroscopic or laparoscopic or through abdominal laparotomy. Also, hysterectomy can be done laparoscopic or vaginal or through abdominal laparotomy. Uterine artery embolization can be done in certain cases and the myolysis can be done in certain cases. Lastly, we shifted to the fibroid during pregnancy and we know the effect of pregnancy with fibroid as increasing the size and the rate degeneration that may happen or torsion in subserous fibroid with reticle and the effect of fibroid on pregnancy may cause miscarriage or the return labor or placental abruption or placenta accreta or return to placenta or postpartum hemorrhage and this is the last of my lecture thank you i'm dr alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of medicine mansoura university